Hi Leo, welcome to your November 2017 love reading. It's Rena here. So as you can see, I've already laid out the cards, but this isn't even the first spread that I've done. I cannot edit my my videos right now because YouTube has taken away that feature. And so rather than, I, I really didn't know what to do. So I decided to do a different spread even, but on top of that, I had to start it over again, so that's that. And then this is the deck I'm using, Crystal Visions Tarot by Jennifer Galasso. I should be having a link below because I'm giving Amazon plenty of uh, free publicity here. But um, yeah, see what you think about these illustrations. I think they're pretty cool myself. Okay. So the heart of the matter for Leo in November is the Six of Swords. This is a card of choosing peace and going towards it. A lot of times um, the, deck, the decks that I use show a person in a boat kind of um, rowing away from a lot of conflict, a lot of drama. So this deck doesn't really, you don't really get that feel, feel from it of leaving, but that's what it's um, about. And so it can actually speak of physical relocation, but also on the emotional level or the mental level where you have kind of decided to stop allowing that disruption in your life. And it can be kind of a pivotal moment where everything has changed. You know, it's funny. I'm looking at your cards, and you have just one major arcana card. And uh, I was doing another sign that it was, I think it was Aquarius, similar types of thing. So this may not be that moment in time. This may be kind of the, the I was going to say the calm before the storm, but um, it's not a storm. It's like the turning point, the the calm before the the turning point. And um, for Leo, because you've had eclipses in August, a lot of that aftermath may be kind of um, coming up in your life. Maybe it didn't happen in August. Maybe it didn't happen in September or October. Maybe it's going to happen in December for you. And even going into the new year, you're going to have a full moon in your sign in in uh, January, I think it's on January 31st, and I think it's a blue moon too, so that's, you know, adds to the rare quality of it. But in the past position, we have the star card. So that is that healing that is taking place, that feeling of things are getting better, that sense of hopefulness coming back into your life. Um, yeah, the, the Six of Swords could mean that you've already done this, I guess. It's just that that is the focal point in your life, that you have maybe made that transition and have left a, a difficult relationship, perhaps. And now you're feeling, you, you felt, you've, you've been feeling hopeful for a while. This is the past position. And that was maybe the catalyst, was leaving a relationship that was really draining you, but maybe you had a hard time living it. Maybe you should have left five years ago, but you just didn't have it in you to do so. The, the energy right now is represented by the Six of Wands, which you see the lion. All wands are connected to fire, so we're talking about Aries, Leo, and Sagittarius, but apparently... This card is specifically connected to Leo, which is uh, your, your sign. And in the decks that I've seen, they show a man on a horse kind of in this position of being celebrated or honored. So th it's funny that they show the, the man with the lion there. Perhaps, um, let me see, is he on top of a mountain? Because that might point to... I think that's a mountain, I'm not sure, but it's pointing to success. That's what it's supposed to represent, is 
that you have some reason to be proud of yourself. And I typically will think of career with wands. So it's, it's very possible that you are discovering your value. And somebody might joke and say, well, Leos are, already know that they're so great and they're, they're so egotistical and things like that. But it seems to me that Leos can sometimes be vulnerable in personal relationships for whatever reason and maybe overstay when they, you know, stay too long in them because they're a fixed sign and don't like that change or maybe this misguided loyalty that kicks in. And so when I look at the higher message, which, which is the spiritual message, it's the Eight of Pentacles, another card about, this is more of a real practical um, work, trying to be as good as you can. So it's kind of like losing yourself in your work. There's a saying, I don't know if it's Buddha, that says, make your Dharma your refuge or something like that. And sometimes... It's not about being a workaholic, it's about being constructive. And and Leos are very, um, they can be workaholics. You, your sign can be workaholics. But sometimes workaholism is due to needing, it's like this kind of a recognition is needed because the person is insecure and they can't find value within themselves other than as a producer. And that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about understanding your value and honoring yourself at the same time. To me, the Six of Swords is honoring oneself. Even though it's kind of like a mental thing, it's like choosing to surround yourself with people who are more harmonious and not people who create drama. That's, it's, the swords are about communication and thought and things like that. And the number six is about peace, harmony, uh, family in some cases, or love. It's, it's connected to Venus. So we have two sixes in that top row, which are speaking to that kind of harmony and peace. And then this eight of the higher message is about success. Number eight connects to success. And, you know, in a worldly sort of way. But this is a spiritual card, so that can show that sometimes work can be a spiritual practice if you are trying to better yourself and you're trying to honor yourself. What crosses you is the King of Cups. Now, this could be if you are leaving somebody who's a water sign, Cancer, Scorpio, which is the usual suspect for Leos, or um, Pisces, that could be that person. Maybe they are not willing to just let you go off into the sunset and they're causing problems. But this can also be, if this is the father of your child, um, that would be also emphasize that king can be father. This could be even your own father who is um, an influence in your life in a very subtle way. Um, I'm thinking of women who deal with men and they don't realize some women, and I'm going to say this, you know, <laughs> I don't care. Um, some women don't realize that they have hostility towards men uh, because they're angry at their fathers. Even if they never have met their fathers, they may be angry at them. And so they project that anger onto every man that they meet. And that, that does happen. And, and yet, at the same time, because of the law of attraction, you may find men who represent that, who prove to you how bad men are because they... Um, <clears throat> excuse me, they don't stick around, they leave, but then you have, you may be having behavior that forces them to leave at the same time. So you're doing, it's like you're afraid that they're going to do it first, so you have to be the one to reject them. So look at that. 
If that's something that even faintly rings true, and if that angers you that I'm saying that, then maybe that's even more reason to look at it. The King of Cups can be a male who has some kind of emotional mood disorder, bipolar, whatever the other things are that are like that, where they cycle. They Sometimes they're very happy, and maybe you think, oh, wow, we can make this work out, and then they go into that dark phase. And this person, it might have shown why it never had a chance, because this person has some kind of a problem. Um, also, somebody who is totally manipulative, who tries to guilt you um, into being with them, doing what they want all the time. And that could be, you know, now that I think about it, that could be a narcissist or an energy vampire, for sure. And I think they're one and the same, to be honest with you. But the energy vampire, somebody who uses their own problems, that's a covert narcissist, to try to get you to always pay attention to them and have them be the center of your life. So um, that, if, if, if it is a water sign, I could see like a Pisces person doing that, maybe a Cancer. And then the, the one who preys upon your vulnerabilities by who knows like what buttons to push. And that would be more of the Scorpio. So just putting that out there, this person might be bad news for you. <clears throat> now these are two great cards. What's coming in is the Nine of Cups, Wish Fulfillment. And um, by the way, it's right underneath that uh, um, sign that's associated with Aquarius, your opposite sign, the Star card. So you may even have somebody like a, an Aquarius who's come into your life and really helped you to feel better about your state of, of uh, affairs. Um, Nine of Cups, totally about having your dreams come true, having your wishes fulfilled. And if that involves love, we have here the Ten of Cups. And it's such a beautiful card. Now, the reason that they include the child is because this is a card of family. And tens relate to family, but it's about harmony, love, marriage. So with the Nine and Ten of Cups as what is coming in and, and, and um, in the near future and then the, the actual Ten of Cups, it sounds like some of you could meet the person that is really the, the one that you want to commit to. So there, like if you look at the top Actually, this whole reading is awesome. Not even the top row. What am I talking about? The top row is awesome too. The, it's like the, the, the focus card, the, the Six of Swords, is not a bad card. It's just that I realize it may take a lot of guts for people to leave a relationship that, in some cases, may be a long-term one because you really honor yourself and you don't want to feel bad anymore. I think that's fantastic. So there's no, you know, there's no downside here. It's just all like good. It's all good, Leo. So I hope you enjoyed this. If you'd like a private reading, please click on the link below. Otherwise, have an awesome November. Bye.